In this Tobacco University student series video, we're going to learn the correct way to take a soil sample in both a field as well as an indoor application that's using a mineral-based soil and why it's important to go through this process. The reason that we would do a soil test is because we need to know what's going on in the soil before we actually plant our plants. This is because we want the biggest yield possible and so we need to know how to amend the soil properly. That's why we take a soil test. So I have a soil corer here. I'm going to want to pick the area that you plan on growing your plants in and try to dig it in 6 to 10 inches deep. Once it's in there, you're going to want to spin the corer to take your sample. The reason we want it 6 to 10 inches deep is because that's where the roots are most prevalent. We get the best root profile from that. Once you're done spinning, you take out your corer, you see we have the soil all in there, and dump it out into your bucket. After that, you're ready to take your next sample. Now how you go about determining where that next sample is taken can play into a little bit about knowing your field or knowing your location. So it can really be as fine or as broad as you want. If the field history is known, this can be very helpful. However, when in doubt, if you're first sampling an area, favor more sections, and if the results come back similar, you can merge those the next time. Things you want to be considering is like maybe an eroded area, a lightly colored soil and a darkly colored soil. This would be kind of like a broad way to kind of segregate things. Here we're looking at a little bit more of a detail. We're taking into account slope or fence lines or manure added or a low spot. So you really can get quite detailed with it if you want to go through and do that. Now when you're going through and taking those six to 10 samples or more, uh, it should be random, but it should also still effectively cover the area. Minimum of six to 10 would be taken depending on uh, the area uh, that you're looking as far as determining that. But this is kind of when I talk about random, you know, an efficient way to walk through the field, but sampling from that location and repeat the same process for your other uh, subdivisions within your sample site. Now that we've taken all of our samples out from the ground, we're ready to send it out to be tested. So what you're gonna need is a labeled bag so that no one gets confused, either the scientists or you, when it gets back to you of what soil it is. And then you're gonna wanna take roughly two cups, which is like two handfuls of soil and put it into your bag. Once you have that ready, just seal it off get your paperwork ready, and send it off to the lab. All right, we just saw the proper procedure for soil sampling and outdoor mineral-based soil. However, I want to remind you that if plants are growing in soilless media, then a soilless media extract sampling procedure and specialized tests should be conducted. And there's a separate video on Debaco University on that specifically. Now, in this operation that we're going to see, we're going to move indoors, and we're going to use a modified traditional soil sampling technique because mineral-based soil was used. It was a combination of soil and compost with some rice hulls on the top. So the, basically, the regular soil sampling procedure could be followed for mineral-based soils with a couple a few modifications to smaller colors using the trowel and using six to ten containers to make our final sample that will be sent to the lab. Growing in containers is different uh, than a typical field, but the principles of soil sampling when it's mineral based is essentially the same. So this is how you take an indoor soil sample. Obviously it's a little different from taking an outdoor soil sample because we are inside. We're growing out of a bucket, we're already irrigating, and most of the time we have amendments made, like rice holes, to prevent bug breeding within the soil. So, you're gonna wanna move anything obstructing the soil, like the rice holes, out of the way, so you could clearly see the soil. Take your trowel and put it in about four inches deep. I'd say that's a good size for this bucket. Then you're gonna wanna cut out an area, kinda just circle the trowel around, until you have like a one inch diameter to take out. Now clearly it's gonna be a little more difficult since we're already rooting, but it's still possible. And you just take your hand, and grab the sample out of, this, out of the bucket. Now once you have your soil sample, you can put it into this bucket. Once we have our two cups worth, we're ready to start sending it out to the lab. 
So we're gonna need to take labeled bags to put each of our soil samples in so neither the scientist or we get confused when testing the soil. You're gonna wanna take two cups worth, which is, if you don't have a cup, about two handfuls, and put it into the bag. Now once you have about two cups worth, you're gonna wanna take your bag, seal it, get your paperwork ready to go, and send it off to the lab to be tested. And for those that want to learn more about soil testing, there's some other Debaco University videos. This one uh, provides a detailed look into soil sampling with other tools and methods included, such as using a PVC pipe or just a, a simple shovel. Uh, if, when that soil goes off to the lab, if you want to kind of see what it goes through, well, the path of soil through a testing lab. If you ever wonder what that soil kind of goes through, uh, this shows the full and complete process. And then lastly, just another brief overview of the process with some other suggestions provided. So you're welcome to check out these additional videos on soil sampling because it's very important you get a good sample to the lab so you get quality results back so you can make proper amendments if you need to.